Welcome to Cheers. I'm your host, Avery Woods. Hi guys, welcome back to the Cheers podcast. I'm your host, Avery Woods. Thank you so much for being here today. I'm so excited for today's episode. We did an episode talking about friendships and that type of relationship, but today we are going to do a kind of intimate relationship advice column. I saw a lot of you guys submit some questions and asking for some advice on Spotify, YouTube, and my Instagram DMs, whatever the case may be, and I wanna talk about it. We had so many amazing submissions. I would never consider any relationship perfect, and I definitely don't feel like my marriage is perfect. None is, and if someone says that, they're lying, let me tell you. But I do feel like Dave and I have been together for a long time. Um, It's been over a decade, which is crazy. And I feel like we've experienced most things that... Anyone that's experienced one thing that we've been through in an entire relationship of a lifetime together, we've experienced like five of those things in the span of 10 years, which is crazy. Especially being part of a blended family where... You know, I have a relationship with his ex-wife and I help raise two kids I didn't birth and going through custody battles and long distance and, you know, I feel like from 18 years old to 28, I'll be 29 next month, it's, it's so much growing as a human being individually, so to be able to do that with a partner by my side, we've learned so much and we've gone through a lot and... It's been an incredible road. There's been rocky times, obviously, but I feel like when people ask me relationship advice, I'm always really honest, and I hope that whatever I've experienced, I can give you guys advice on maybe what I think I could have done differently or what I think is a decision that I would make now as I'm more mature, matured and grown as a woman compared to decisions that I made when I was like 18, 19 years old, you know? So I'm going to read through these. These are all anonymous, by the way. Let me pause right there. I'm going to yeah. turn the fan off. Okay, you're fine. It won't catch it, but it'll be safe. Okay, all right. Okay, first question. How to spend time together slash keep romance alive when we are both burnt out from work and just want to chill but still hang out? P.S. Illy, this podcast keeps me going when I'm driving to work. Thank you so much. That's really cute. That makes me happy. Anytime you guys like tag me on Instagram or TikTok, whatever the case may be, and I see that you're listening to the podcast while you're cleaning, you're driving to work, or even while you're working, it makes my heart so happy. So thank you so much. So I feel like I've talked about this a trillion billion times, but I'm such an advocate for in-home date nights. I just feel like it doesn't matter what's going on in your life it doesn't matter how much money you have you always can choose to spend time together without spending money and I feel like that's just a choice you have to make and I also feel like that kind of goes with intimacy especially like when I was working super long 12 13 14 hour shifts and David was working as a sergeant working super long days as well we would get home from work and we were dead like we were so tired we could not commit to giving more time to each other because we were just burnt out. And that was something that we both had an understanding of, which I'm really grateful for, that we both had really busy, insane careers that really impacted our lives. So we kind of just had a mutual understanding where we didn't need to talk about it, but we just needed to decompress on our own. And that's okay. I do feel like committing to one day a week is always a great thing to do. For us personally every Wednesday is date night and that was something that we only started doing a couple months ago but I'm so glad that we do it and it doesn't have to mean that we're going out or we have to have our nanny come watch the kids and we have to pay her money like even if even last night last night we sat on the couch we watched our little Netflix murder series that we've been watching ate Handel's ice cream and crumble cookies and we just talked and laughed and it's like in the presence of being in your sorry I can't talk it's like being in the presence of your best friend when you're in a good healthy relationship like that and I feel lucky that we have that but I feel like when you do feel burnt out and when you're just overstimulated and over exhausted you guys have to set some sort of schedule and I know that feels 
too planned and maybe forced but I feel like it gives you something to look forward to and it's also fun when you plan to do something new together and again you can always go out and do something try a new restaurant or go do an activity go paint pottery whatever the case may be but you can also commit to maybe renting a movie at home or I've seen that TikTok trend I want to do that with David so bad where it's the couples have canvases and they paint each other's faces I think it's so funny because I'm like the least artistic person ever but I feel like just even spending a few bucks on arts and crafts and ordering in or cooking a new meal together that to me is quality time and also just putting your phones down like I'm so guilty of that where I'm either constantly working from my phone or I'm constantly scrolling which is so not healthy but we have a little nook in our kitchen where all of our chargers are and like for instance last night when I knew I just wanted to spend quality time with him and I had a hard day and so he you know makes me feel better and brings me comfort I forced myself to put my phone down and I charged my phone in the nook and I didn't look at it for the rest of the night and it was so nice just to focus on him and give him 100% of my attention because even though if you think you're paying attention to someone you're on your phone you just aren't hearing everything that they're saying and it's not fair to them and I try to think about that with my kids too which is a whole other subject but if I'm face deep in my phone I'm not gonna be able to give myself 100% of my attention and I know when I'm speaking to someone and they're scrolling on their phone it bothers me when I'm like pouring my heart out or trying to talk to them and they don't hear a word I'm saying because they're scrolling on their phone, you know? So I try to be mindful of that as well. All right, how to feel confident in the bedroom with my partner when I'm so insecure. Let me tell you something. Confidence is sexy as hell. I'm telling you. I don't care what you look like, what skills you choose to show off in the bedroom, whether you're wearing lingerie, whether you're fully clothed. If you exude confidence, that is such a turn on to the person that you're intimate with. I I mean, I was so insecure and shy for so long in the bedroom with David. I will not even lie about that. I feel like it wasn't until after I had kids that I felt more confident in the bedroom. I just think I always had body image issues and so it wasn't until I watched myself, you know, grow a human and nurture them and see what my body can do that it gave me that confidence but I truly think fake it till you make it like get a sexy outfit go and I told you guys Amazon has my favorite lingerie like I have a little section of my storefront I love their lingerie and it's like 20 bucks for a set David always says he doesn't prefer lingerie he likes me naked and I'm kind of like mm, I think you're lying but whatever sometimes I just wear it for me like even if I put it on and I take a, a picture of myself I'm like that doesn't need to go anywhere that's for me like I feel good about myself and that's what matters don't think about what the person is thinking of when they see you because that's gonna bring our insecurities think about how you feel how you feel internally how you feel physically how you know you feel intimate and connected with this person that's what's important and even if you don't feel confident in that moment just fake it and it will come to you, I promise. All right, how to get a man to commit. I feel like my generation is so very hooked. Yo, this is so true. It's so very hookup based and trying to find someone who wants to commit is hard. What's your go-to tip for someone who struggles with this? This is so true and honestly, I feel so sad for all of my friends that are single because I feel like the dating app world has ruined dating. Like, it is mind-blowing to me that no one has manners or just, like, human decency to approach someone publicly. I feel so lucky that I met David before dating apps were, like, a big thing. I think Tinder had, like, just come out, but it wasn't, like, the main way people met people. And obviously, we met at Starbucks, and he approached me, and I remember being so flattered and also so turned on by his confidence to approach me and come up to me and I feel like times have really changed and not for the better and I feel like if it's if it's not expected to be approached on a dating app then people will try to find you on social media like I know so many people that 
will meet someone in person and instead of that person asking for their information their phone number they'll go dm them on social media i'm like what happened to just approaching someone and complimenting them and saying you know can i have your number and obviously it's easier said than done but i do feel like that goes far longer in respect wise like someone is going to choose someone that approaches them in person like that over scrolling and getting a dm on a dating app that's just the way it is and i i don't know if i could survive being single in this dating app world i think it's just beyond and sure there are definitely successful stories like i have a lot of friends that met via dating apps and have successful relationships and marriages and i do think it works for people that are super super busy like if you work a really intense busy career you don't go out a lot but you want to find a partner for you i do think that there are dating apps that work but i just think it's hindered a lot of men especially to feel the need to not have to approach women anymore and it's just sad like i feel like it's sad that we've turned into that and i'm like god what's gonna happen when my kids are old enough to date like what's gonna be going on with that but I think as far as this person specifically in this question, I think be patient. I think when the time is right, it'll be right and you will meet the person for you. I also think there's nothing wrong with making the first move. And I know it's intimidating because like when I was single, I, I was obviously really young. You would not catch me dead approaching a man and asking for their information. No fucking way. Maybe now that I'm older and more mature, but... I think if you see someone and there's potential, you'll always leave that situation with regret if you don't get their information. So it's like, why not? I also know a lot of straight men that have had women approach them and they're like, I've never been more turned on because either maybe they didn't see them or they were too shy. And so the fact that a woman came up to them, they're like, oh my God, that's so hot. Again, confidence, confidence is sexy. So if you see someone publicly and you're like mm, they're kind of my vibe go make a conversation who cares like you're hot go buy him a drink go do something like women can lead that situation do you know what i'm saying like we have titties go work it all right what is the best piece of advice you can give to someone who was married young i got married at 22 and i feel like there's a huge judgment around getting married young and then and a quote expectation for it to fail oh i feel you girl I, you know, I got married at 21 and obviously it's very young when you think about it, but we also were together since I was 18. So we were together for almost three years before we got married. And that's a good amount of time to be with someone before you get married. And I was always asked two questions. One, are you Mormon? Or two, are you pregnant? And I always remember being like, neither. Why does it have to be that? Like, why can't I just get married because I love my husband? or I loved at the time my fiance and I know that he's the one and obviously people judge other people that are young because they think it's a lack of maturity when I do feel like there's a lot of people that are fully mature very young and I know I was really mature at 21 and I had my life together but I think it's just you feel it when it's right you feel it in your bones and I also think it's important to stand up for yourself and your partner like if people question you, you can literally look at them and be like, this isn't your relationship, it's mine. And you can choose to get married whenever you want. That's your choice. This is my relationship. And I think everyone has different timing. And I know people that are getting married in their 40s, and that's their timing. And they live this whole incredible life before that they, that they met their partner. And so they feel like they're not missing out on anything. And then there's people like me or this person asking the question of they got married young and they chose to experience all those you know times in life with their partner and grow together and there's also nothing wrong with that either I think every individual has different timing and you need to do what's right for you and that's all that matters all right my boyfriend and I have been in a relationship for a little over two years and a long distance relationship for three months how do you find new and exciting things to do together while being apart? Long distance is so hard. And you guys know Dave and I lived in separate states for 
an entire year my last year of nursing school and it was so difficult especially because we were married and it was like the beginning parts of our marriage so we had to grow really quickly establish a lot of trust and it's hard when you want to spend quality time together but you can't because you're completely separated I do think long distance is possible I think it's you know looked down upon a lot from people and I just don't understand why people have lives and have committed to things like school and family and work and sometimes that separates you for a little bit but that's okay you know the cheesy quote distance make the, makes the heart grow fonder and that's so true every time I was with David when we were in a long distance relationship I just grew more and more love for him because I just looked forward to being with him and I feel like that's what proves success in a relationship is that you miss that person so much I don't think it's healthy when you want to be away from a person too much I think it is important to have separate time away from each other but when you're like oh yeah I don't want them around me it's probably not a good sign but I think spending time together obviously something like FaceTime dates like you guys can order in the same meal maybe if you can do that and get on FaceTime and have a little dinner date together I think that's so cute you could send each other little boxes and let them know you're thinking of them watch a movie together that'd be cute you could like rent a movie watch on FaceTime together I feel like there's a lot of things that you can do where you're not physically together but you feel like you're together so even like some of my friends and I will watch shows and like text during the show and I feel like I'm with them even if we're not because like our kids are asleep so we can't be at each other's houses stuff like that that makes it really fun and I think obviously it's hard because it takes a lot of time and money to go visit each other but I think you know trying to commit to even if it's once a month seeing each other that gives you something to look forward to and making sure that when you're together it's quality time and that you're focusing on each other a hundred percent because that's all that matters that's your foundation okay this is an interesting one how to handle your significant other moping around when you don't want to engage in any sexual activity i'm assuming that they mean moping around because you don't want to have sex with them here's my thing i've i've known people in the past that their husbands have told them like very specifically if we don't have sex minimum x amount of week then they feel like their marriage isn't in a good spot and i just don't feel like that's healthy i don't think a relationship should be based off the amount that you're sexually active with one another i think it always ebbs and flows no matter what's going on it so many things happen in life and also things get in the way you know like even with marriage what do they say in sickness and in health i'm sorry but if i'm like i'm on my deathbed sick my kids give me a cold and i feel like shit i'm not going to be having sex with you like but that's a very mutual understanding with my husband and i i think the moping around thing kind of shows a lack of immaturity I'm sorry a lack of maturity not immaturity it i just think if if a person is focusing on the relationship sexually over everything else there's there's so much more in a relationship that should be more important than sex i do think sex is a huge part of a relationship and i think it's very important to have a good sexual relationship with your partner but it shouldn't be the number one priority and if it is a number one priority that's probably not a good thing i think like for instance dave and i have an incredible sex life after 10 years together but that's not the first thing I think of when someone asks me, like, the best part of our relationship, you know? That is in addition to having a good sex life with your partner is an add-on to everything else that you should be connected on. I think intimacy and sex are also two di very different things. And I feel like no person, especially a woman, is going to want to be intimate with their partner if they don't feel connected mentally and they don't feel like their relationship is at a good place so when you're not wanting to be intimate with your partner and they're throwing a fit about it i think it's important to explain why that way in the future maybe that they can they can work on changing their ways or you guys can have a better sense of communication together i think it's so important in a relationship to be honest about that even if the conversation's really hard just be like hey 
I don't want to have sex right now. Here's why. Like, I don't feel connected to you or I'm exhausted or, you know, the kids were hard today or I had a bad day at work. And if you're not mentally, like, even if there's times where I'm not mentally, I don't have the mental mindset to want to put out to David when I've had a hard day. And that sometimes has nothing to do with him and nothing to do with our marriage. Maybe I'm just sad or I had a rough day. I'm like, I don't, if I'm going to be thinking about something else in the moment, I don't want to have sex with you because that's not fair to you. Like, I'm sorry, I'm not going to be a blow up doll and like mentally not be there. That's just not healthy. And that's not a way to go about it. Although I will say sometimes when I've had a bad day, sometimes sex takes me out of that bad day. And I'm like, hell yeah, I got it. Like, thank you for making me feel better. And I could sleep like a baby. But in this situation, I don't agree with partners guilt tripping someone for not being intimate enough with them. I don't think that's healthy at all in a relationship. I I think that I don't know if it's a lack of maturity or growth or that's just the only thing that's on their mind, but I think there's a lot more ways to connect in a relationship outside of sex, which then betters the sex life because then you're you're so much more intertwined and close, which then, you know, kicks up the intimacy side of a relationship. And I think that's a beautiful thing that it all kind of like grows together. And again, with the with this person asking this question about moping around, I think it's just a conversation that needs to be had because it's not fair for them to be moping around and almost making you feel guilty and kind of guilt tripping you into being intimate with them because that's not what sex is about. Sex is about, you know, this connection and love you have with someone together and you guys both need to be in the same place when it comes to that. How did you get through financially tough times without placing blame on one another or letting it affect your relationship? Ooh, this is a good question. Listen, there was a time, there was a time where we were so poor and I could not stop spending money. <laughs> Thank God I didn't have credit cards back then. Can you fucking imagine? But I would totally lie to David. <laughs> oh God, think about this is so bad. I'd be like, no, I did not make an online order. That's crazy. I don't know. And then we get a package at the door. He's like, bitch, you fucking lying to me. He never talked to me like that, by the way. I'm just making fun. But um, yeah, see, that's hard. And I, I also feel like it's really hard when one of you makes more money than the other one. And I feel like I have a different perspective on that now because David and I have like totally flip-flopped because there was a time where you know, when I was in nursing school and David had me quit my job and he was working so much overtime just to keep a roof over our head. I had no business spending money on going out to eat and Starbucks and clothes. And I was young and immature and that was the, I have regrets when it comes to that. But now you know, he's a stay at home dad. And I feel so privileged to provide that for my family. And it's so interesting because people ask me all the time, like, does it bother you that he doesn't make money anymore? No. First of all, marriage is, or a relationship is a commitment to one another. And he might not be contributing financially, but the amount that he contributes to myself, my business, my family, the kids is so much more beneficial and impactful to me than him earning a paycheck. And that's just point blank period. I think it's hard not to think about the nitty gritty, especially when you feel financial stress to me is the most stressful thing in the fucking world. Like, Oh my God, thinking back to those times, you know, when was that? I don't know, six, seven years ago when we had nothing. Our account was in the red every single month. We were so poor. The girls were sleeping on an air mattress on the ground, sometimes sleeping bags in a one bedroom apartment. Like we did not have a thing. And sometimes David and I will think back and be like, those are some of the happiest times in our lives because the smallest moments meant so much to us. And it's crazy because, you know, when you are that poor, 
you think about all of these things that you want, not that you need, but you want, right? Like you want this big house and you want all this money in your bank account. You want to buy all these things. And it's interesting because now that I'm at that point where I've reached those goals, that is not what matters at all. And I feel like I've gotten a lot of that out of my system. Some definitely not necessary, but it really makes you focus on what matters and that's the people around you and the love that you have and the love that you share together but I do think when it comes to finances nothing is more stressful and impactful on a relationship like some of the rockiest times in Dave and I's marriage was when we had no money because we would both just wake up stressed every single day and that automatically puts you on even more edge and then edge with each other because you just constantly blame each other and talk about it and, oh, you shouldn't have spent that money or, you know, we didn't need to buy that, whatever the case may be. But I do think it's so important to have an open communication when it comes to budgeting. And that was something that Dave and I definitely could have improved on. But then we, you know, sat down, made Excel spreadsheets. We talked about what we'd budget weekly for groceries or gas or, you know, if we were able to go out to eat once a month, what whatever the case would be, how much money we could spend, that is super, super important. Because if you're not on the same page when it comes to finances, especially when you're financially stressed, you'll never figure it out. Like it's it's too complicated and too many things go into it. But I do feel like it's possible and you'll get past it. I I know it's so like, you don't want to hear that because I remember people would be like, you'll get past it. And I'm like, yeah, fuck you. I'm so stressed. Don't tell me that. But there will be a time where you'll get past it and you'll be like, oh my God, I'm so glad I went through that because it really does give you a different perspective on life. And I feel like you guys just have to work together in order to get over that hump. And when you do, it's so worth it. Okay. I love this question. Ways to refrain from being so quick to think my boyfriend is being unfaithful. I've been cheated on multiple times in the past, so sometimes I feel myself overthinking when he's given me no reason at all. So my relationship prior to David, I was cheated on, and more than once, mind you, I was also lied to a bunch about, you know, really bad drug problems and just a lot of behind-the-scenes things that were really hard for me, especially being so young. So I was with this person from when I was 15 till I was 18 years old. I always had issues when it came to trust with David and that was had nothing to do with him and had to do with the fact that I was taken advantage of and I was lied to so so much and it was also the only relationship I ever had it to compare to I was never treated well by anyone in the past before I met David so I also didn't have enough life experience you know and I feel like I immediately brought that with me into my relationship with David and it was really hard and I was the person that was constantly checking his phone I was constantly trying to like log into his Facebook when he had one at the time and it also was super triggering for me because he had an ex-wife that he had a relationship with like for with my ex-boyfriend it's like okay that relationship ends I'd never have to speak to you again we don't share children together or like any mutual thing that we have to continue seeing each other it's different with David you know he has the two girls that we love more than anything but he shares that with his ex-wife and that's really hard because I knew from a very young age that she would be in our lives forever and that's no hate at all to her and she's never done anything to make me think anything in the sense of like an unfaithful situation but obviously being really young and so insecure and bringing these unfaithful experiences I had in the past with me into this relationship with David, it made it extra, extra hard. I think, like you said in the question, he is giving you no reason to. So hold on to that. It's so important. Like David and I were laughing and talking about the other day. I'm like, I can't even think of the last time I went through David's phone. I l- it's been years and I I don't even know what like switched it for me I think obviously maturity motherhood starting a family together seeing his commitment to our family knowing that he's 
you know, always putting us first and making us his number one priority. If, if you don't have anything to question, don't question it because you're going to send yourself spiraling and then your partner is going to resent you for it because it sounds like your partner works hard in order to make sure that you feel comfort in, in the relationship and that they're not doing anything to be unfaithful. So I feel like you should have some grace with them in the sense of respecting that, you know, they're putting you first and that they haven't done anything to question. Now, if anything changes and they do do something that makes you question, then you better go all fucking for it and question them. And the second that they lie, white lie, are holding back, that's when you have the right to question the faithfulness. But as of now, if they aren't giving you those signs, don't push it because I feel like that's what strains a relationship so much more is when this person is like, I'm doing my best. I'm committed to you. I'm not being unfaithful to you. You know, here's my phone. Here's what you need to see. I have nothing to hide. That should be your answer right there. It's not until they start questioning that you should start. It's not. I'm sorry. It's not until they start doing something for you to question that then the unfaithful thoughts can, you know, take lead and you can question your partner. But I also feel like there's healthy boundaries and, you know, I'm kind of like touch and go when it comes to the whole location thing. Dave and I share each other's location because of the kids. I think that's important, but like, I don't think it's necessary if that's something that you're worried about, you can always have that conversation with your partner. But again, if they don't give reason to, don't don't a- accuse the person. Because I know if David ever came up to me and was like, are you being unfaithful or have you done this or accused me of lying? I would be so pissed because I know how committed I am to him and our family that I think it would trigger me internally because I've never done anything like that. And so it would bother me. And so I think about both sides, but I don't say that lightly because again, I've been in that situation where in the beginning stages of our, of our relationship, I brought in a lot of baggage from my previous relationship with my high school boyfriend that I was questioning anything and everything David did, especially when it came to having his ex-wife in his life. That was really, really hard for me. And something that I grew out of and I'm thankful that I know if I ever questioned David on anything, he would be like, what do you need to know? You know, here it is. And I feel like if your boyfriend is that way too, let him have some grace. And I feel like that will then strengthen the relationship. And I also feel like as time goes by and you instill that trust in each other, it'll get easier because I remember... When I got to the point where I was like, hey, I don't need to be questioning him. He's never doing anything. Now it's been so many years and I'm like, I kind of just laugh at how how worried I was all the time when I didn't need to be. And I feel like as you start to let go of that, like chokehold of, of being cheated on in the past, then it will start to get easier and you'll realize, you know, you're with the right person and you're with someone that's fully committed to you no matter what. All right. I love this question. I've been with my boyfriend for 10 years. We got together when I was 16 and sometimes I feel like the spark burns out. What is some creative ways to bring back the romance and spark back into it? Love that question. I, we've also been together for 10 years and I also feel like 16 to 26 is a hard age. Like that's a lot of life you've lived together. I feel like Even if you've only been together for a year, sometimes the spark will burn out. And again, relationships are all about ebbs and flows, right? I feel like you have to kind of branch out and do new things together. I also feel like it's important to grow individually. And I feel like, you know, as I left one career, started another, became a businesswoman, um, those were all things that I did individually. And obviously I had David by my side and he helped me so much, but I do feel like that was my own path that I created. And that I feel like strengthened our relationship a lot too, because I was able to grow as a human being. And I feel like when you grow as a person individually, you can give more of yourself to your partner because although I think it's a beautiful thing to grow together and go through so many things together, it's also important to grow on your own. 
And I think it's also important to encourage your partner to grow as their own person and individually. But I do feel like, you know, getting the spark back, you have to keep stuff like keep things fun, keep the spark alive in, in the sense of go on group dates, go. I love like when people do the little mason jars with like the popsicle stick and they'll draw for like a different kind of date night. I feel like that's fun. Taking little trips together, weekend getaways, even taking trips for yourself, like with your friends and coming back and, you know, you miss that love and that person. I feel like that also strengthens a relationship. I feel like also setting goals together as well as individually can help strengthen a relationship and keep that spark alive because when you guys are both obtaining a goal together, it makes it so much more fun and exciting. And also it help it helps you work together towards something that you've always wanted. And I feel like David and I are at that point right now where we're starting a business. And so we get to work on it together and be business partners in addition to being married and being parents together. And it's such a magical, beautiful thing. So I feel like it's not all about keeping the sex alive or or keeping the spark when it comes to going out a lot or keeping it fun. I feel like also setting goals for your future. Again, you said you've been together for 10 years since you were 16. So you guys are coming into the space of adulthood where your careers are developing or maybe you just finished college. I don't I don't know anything about your or your story, but I feel like kind of setting goals where you're at the point where do you want to get married? Like when do you guys want kids? Do you want to buy a house? What are your next steps together? I feel like setting goals like that does keep the spark alive and that might just be for me and myself, but I feel like flourishing in a relationship has so many different valleys and possibilities because it's not just about intimacy and romance, right? There's so many different parts of a relationship that have nothing to do with that. And it's such a fun thing to experience that together and grow together. And I feel like that reignites excitement in your relationship together as well as individually. All right, you guys, that was a short and sweet episode, but I loved it so much. Please let us know in the comments, whether you're on YouTube, Spotify, or even DM me what you guys want to see in the next episode. We are doing staggered episodes, meaning one solo episode and then one interview. We just did a ton of interviews in LA and we have so many exciting episodes coming to you soon. So I'm so excited for you to listen to them. I love you so much. I will see you next week. Cheers.